In today's video, I'm taking the very first train from exciting startup European Sleeper between Brussels and Prague. I'll spend 16 hours on this beautiful vintage sleeper car as we travel via four European capitals on the goodnight train. I'll show you the accommodation and service on board, what I ate, and of course tour my sleeper berth, and not forgetting the stunning scenery you can catch from this train. I'll also cover a couple of things I think European sleeper could do better. And what's more, what if I told you this train made London to Prague doable in 24 hours without flying? Come with me on this epic journey as we travel 1200 kilometers by rail on this unique sleeper train service. Today's video starts at the unassuming Brussels Midi Station, also known, confusingly, as Brussels South. It's not exactly the nicest station you'll ever use, but it does the job. And it's where today's European sleeper will depart from at 1922. Now, you can eat before you travel, but I tend to stock up on snacks and buy a carrier board supper. There are plenty of places to do this at Midi Station. Also worth noting are the luggage storage lockers, useful if you've had an early checkout or if you've come in on an earlier connecting train and want to spend the afternoon in the city. They even have XXL size ones for very large suitcases. This is the first day of running to Prague, but the paper timetables are already updated. This new service is really exciting. It means you can take the 1301 Eurostar departure from London St Pancras, giving you over two hours connecting time in Brussels. And it means London to Prague is possible by rail in under 24 hours. We'll be using Platform 6 today, which is in the slightly less scruffy area of the station. Here, regular Continental Eurostar, formerly Talis, trains depart for destinations in France, the Netherlands and Germany. So here we are, just waiting for the train to arrive. This is my first time riding European Sleeper and of course it's the inaugural ride to Prague. I'm really looking forward to this one. I do wish the platform screens showed the locations of the European Sleeper carriages like they do for other trains. Today's train is very long and knowing exactly where to stand would be great. Hopefully a solution for this is in the works soon. Today's train is a huge consist. There are couchette cars at the front, but the star of the show is the presence of two stainless steel P-type sleeper cars, originally built in the 1950s by the Wagon Lease Company. Lovely stuff. Towards the back of the train are more of the air-conditioned couchettes from the 1990s, as well as some older Slovakian couchette cars and a small amount of seated accommodation. Train lengths can vary, and I wager this might be the longest train European sleeper has ever run. It was really popular on this special night. Wow, I'm really looking forward to getting on this beautiful 1950s stainless steel sleeper car. I think this might be the most confusing boarding process I've ever had on a sleeper train. No, it's alright, I think I'm asking the same question. Oh, okay. changed the numbers, haven't they? Well, yeah. we were told we were an 18 by an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. Alright, so I think we're all in the same boat. These are the only two sleeper cars though. What a mess. Lucas Paul? Yes? Uh, three. Number three? three yeah. Okay, thank you. Right, thank, thank you. you. The source of all the confusion? Well, in their wisdom, European Sleeper covered over the birth numbers with some other random room numbers, which confused everyone, and half the passengers were in the wrong berth as a result. But we got there eventually, a case of trying to make things simpler, but ending up more complicated, I think. 
well, that was really frustrating, but I think we can write that off as a teething problem. I'm now in this beautiful vintage sleeper car, and wow, it is roomy. We leave Brussels right on time, and I manage to spot an empty couchette with slide down window for some great views. We'll take a closer look at these couchettes a bit later. I'm it's and I am your train manager. On behalf of European Sleeper and my entire crew, I warmly welcome you aboard this train with final destination, Prague via Amsterdam and Berlin. The steward responsible for your carriage will come to check This the train may serve four capitals, but it actually makes 18 stops. So even if Brussels isn't your hopping on point, there are other options to join the train later. This train used to run only to Berlin, and it's still a popular stopping off option. Quite a few people alighted here from the train. Each passenger gets a bottle of water and a menu where you can purchase snacks and drinks from the host. Sleeper passengers get a free welcome beer, and on this train only, every passenger got a special inaugural certificate. That's us now just left Antwerp and heading up towards Amsterdam for our next stop. It looks like we're on time, at least at this early stage. We'll see how we get on by the time we get to Prague tomorrow morning. I've got the complimentary beer, our welcome drink from the host, and I think it's time that we had a quick look around this wonderful vintage sleeper car. Up to three passengers can share a sleeper, but if there's just one of you, the bottom of the three bunks will be deployed, folding the seats down. The third bunk is in the roof space and looks very spacious. There's good storage for small bags in the roof too, something a lot of modern sleeper cars lack. Although, in common with European trains, there is no checked luggage facility, so try to travel light. The third bunk, if you're using it, can be accessed by a ladder and is probably only an option for people with good mobility. You can book adjoining sleepers too if you're in a large party. The main door locks only from the inside, although it is worth saying this train is very well staffed. I never feel self-conscious about leaving my bags unattended. Behind this closet is your private wash basin. The water pressure is good, but do note this is the location of the only power outlet in the berth. Something to bear in mind if you have two or three people in here. There's aircon too, but I always prefer just to crack the window open. Overall, it's a very spacious sleeper car and a wonderful place to spend a night. And even with three beds deployed, it's still much roomier than I would have imagined. One thing really struck me. There were a lot of young people on this train who all made me feel quite old. It's lively and fun in the couchettes, and it's great to see the next generation plugging into night trains as a fun and responsible way to get around Europe. Of course, the solo sleeper I'm in is very attractive, but the couchettes are still really good value. There are six and five berth couchettes on board, starting at 79 euro per person to share. This is one of the air-conditioned five berths, which attract a 20 euro premium on top of that, but in my view, well worth it in the summer. Central Europe can get surprisingly hot. The couchettes convert to seats for daytime use and even have drop-down tables. This is a really solid option in my view, and I can see why the train's so popular. A basic pillow and blanket are also provided, although unlike sleepers, couchettes do not come with mattresses or duvets. Seated accommodation is also available from 49 euro, but 15 hours in a seat overnight isn't my idea of fun, and you should definitely consider the cheapest tier of couchette for the extra 30 euro it would cost. You can also take a bicycle on board, there are a whopping 20 spaces. The vintage sleeper car toilets are fine, but they are smaller and a bit less pleasant than the ones in the couchettes, shown here. 
You can use any bathroom on the train, no problem, but just don't flush when you're in a station. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe. You'll join a community of hundreds of thousands of other trip report enthusiasts exploring the world with me. As you saw earlier, there is a pretty basic onboard menu of snacks and drinks, and you can place an order with the host, but there are no proper meals on board European Sleeper, and there is no dining car, I'm afraid. So I have got myself a poke bowl, which I bought before travel. You might prefer to actually eat and have dinner before you get on board the train, especially if you're boarding at one of the later stops. But for now, I'm gonna tuck in, and I think we're about half an hour away now from Amsterdam. Some good news. European Sleeper are crowdfunding right now for a dining car, the news being released as I was editing this video. As I walked the train, several groups of people asked if there was a dining car or a bar on board, and I'm confident a big communal space would be amazing for this train. There's something really cool about being on an international sleeper train and watching the world go by, overtaking regular commuter trains and wondering where the people on here are going. Coming home from work late or on their way out for the night, perhaps. Most passengers don't bat an eyelid at our beautiful train, but there are plenty of enthusiasts out there tonight taking pictures and videos. We roll into Amsterdam Central just after half past ten, the grand golden winged wheel looking down on us from atop the train shed. I've had the bed converted from the seats by the host and it's just about time for bed. The bed is really comfortable, there's plenty of duvet to go around and I took an extra pillow from the unused top bunk. I've just noticed that the night light in here up in the ceiling is actually in the shape of a crescent moon which is pretty cool. Anyway that's enough from me tonight, hopefully I'll be up at 6am tomorrow as we're hopefully approaching Berlin. We're on time at the moment, fingers crossed. Good night. After seven hours of restful sleep, we're on time bright and early in Berlin, calling up the lovely upper level of Berlin Hauptbahnhof, where quite a few passengers alight. From here, however, we pick up a delay owing to the morning congestion around Berlin being rerouted from our original planned route. Because of the deviation, we have now a delay of about 50 minutes and we would like to apologise for this. We're about 40 kilometres north of Dresden at the moment and as you heard we are a bit late but I've managed to rustle up some breakfast from the train host and I've got myself a coffee and that's a good way to start the morning in my book. The complimentary breakfast is a simple affair. There's no kitchen so it's all pre-packaged, cereal bars, yoghurt and a croissant capped by a strong coffee. We're now approaching Dresden. This is the first time European Sleeper has called here. Everything east of Berlin is brand new for this company on this inaugural run. Dresden station is stunning. Opened in 1898, it was seriously damaged to the point of being totally inoperable by Allied air raids in 1945, but has been superbly restored. Even the main hall looks superb, complete with Saxonia statue, a personification of the German state of Saxony. It really is quite the building. From Dresden, the route reaches its highlight, the stunning run down the west bank of the Elbe River.
the opening windows really do make for some amazing photo opportunities. We're approaching Bad Shandau, across the river the imposing Prosen military clothing warehouse and on approach we see the Carola Brücke, named after Queen Carola, the last Queen of Saxony. The columns still stand from the first iteration of this bridge which carried both road and rail traffic. We're just arriving now into Bad Shandau, this is the last station in Germany before we head into Czechia. Germany and Czechia are both in Schengen, so no border formalities now exist. This group of buildings effectively marks the border, and we plough on to the stunning city of Ustina Labem. It's worth mentioning that although there is a seated car on the train, I'm reliably told you can't use this train domestically in Czechia, even though it's shown on the station boards. And so we're heading into Prague only around 40 minutes late in the end. It's been a super trip and it's always great to get on an inaugural train like this. The future looked good for European Sleeper. This was a great service and my only criticism of there being no communal space for everyone looks to be being rectified with the next round of funding. There's never been a better time to get into sleeper trains than now and I hope you'll consider taking one in the future. Who knows, you might just end up a convert. Praha Hlavni Nadraji. This is Prague's main station. It's the end of the line for us today, but I have so many more European trips coming up soon, including a peek at the brand new railjet trains, which I'm excited to bring you soon to the channel. And so we've made it to Prague with a delay of only about 40 minutes. It's been a fantastic inaugural ride on European Sleeper here to Czechia. I hope you've really enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the very next video. Bye for now.